Woo! Chetty Bobby, a.k.a. I guess we're back to WrestleMania. Hello, buddy. Look here. Anybody that's following my channel knows that it started as a wrestling channel. I collected wrestling DVDs and Blu-rays. That morphed into Blu-ray collecting. That morphed into horror movie Blu-ray collecting slash 4K collecting. That has now morphed into battle rap and gaming for the most part. I haven't watched WWE in over a year. In the last two years, I've watched two pay-per-views, and it's been the last two WrestleManias. I pretty much washed my hands with WWE. I just don't like the product anymore. AEW comes along, and I'm like, okay, they're making moves. They got big money behind them. The Jaguars owners got Vince McMahon money or more than Vince McMahon money. This could be something. And then they've been picking up steam, picking up steam. I didn't catch the pay-per-views. I watched highlights of them. I've been following podcasts and stuff like that, talking about it. But I never really sat and watched AEW wrestling, like All Elite Wrestling, um, in a in an entirety. In an, and tonight they started the Wednesday Night War, where they are doing AEW Dynamite on TNT, a two-hour program from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., and WWE decides we're going to do NXT from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. on USA. I'm a fan of NXT, but look, this first show, this, this is going to let me know. WWE is going to have a problem on their hands. They can sit there all they want and say that they're not worried about it. They're, get, they're, going, they're going to need to get worried. They're going to need to improve their product because this product right here, is not is not a joke, bro. This was legit. It had my boy. It's got two of my favorite announcers of all time, Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. Both have great podcasts, also that I'm a fan of. They're calling the action along with um, I forgot the other guy's name. Now, granted, I'm not very skilled on AEW. I'm just getting to learn. But if y'all want me to, I'm gonna do these weekly reviews of AEW. This was the first show. We're going to break down each little se segment. I'll give like a, a rating on what I thought, you know, uh, the match was, how I liked it or whatever. And we'll get right into it. It starts off with a match, Cody Rhodes and uh, Sammy Guevara. It's the first time I've seen Guevara like wrestle. I'm a big fan of Cody Rhodes, have been for years. WWE totally misused him like they do so many talents. Um, this match was a great way to start the show off. The production quality is A+. Plus. The crowd was insane all night long. They weren't too annoying. They were they were hanging on their seats. They were, I mean, Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone and the other guy, I'm sorry, I don't know his name. I'm not trying to hate. But uh, Excalibur, I think, they did a great job calling the action. It, should, it just brings me back to when I was younger. Um, and this match was it was really, really good. Um, great back and forth, a lot, of, a lot of close calls. Cody ended up uh, winning the match with a small package, but there was a lot of close calls. I know he did his um, his move where he jumps off that second rope and kicks. I can't. I don't know the names of the moves, um, especially as they've moved over to AEW. Um, there was a lot of close calls, but this uh, Sammy Guevara dude is really good. I had never seen him wrestle before, um, but it was. I'd give it four and a half out of five. I thought it was great, um, and I like how they switched it up. Cody went by the small package instead of. You know, one of these big spots. I thought it was cool that they snuck that in there. Kind of like ECW used to do back in the day. And then Cody is getting ready to have an interview with JR. No, not JR, with Tony Shivani. And dude Guevara comes up to him like they're going to square off. They get ready to shake hands. Crowd starts going nuts. You don't see what's going on. Jericho runs in the ring and assaults Cody Rhodes. I guess they're setting up a match. Um, so great way to start the show. And I, I watch it on Comcast on the app, and it's great. So um, then there was a match between two guys I, I've heard of, but I haven't seen matches from them before, Brandon Cutler and MJF. Um, these Both of these dudes seem like they're pretty good. They just they didn't get a lot of match time. It was kind of a short match. Brandon Cutler did some kind of move. It looked like he hurt his knee. I don't know if that was part of the of the storyline or if he actually did hurt it, and maybe they cut the match short, or, or maybe that's just part of the storyline, how they did the match. But MJF gets his, wins by submission immediately as soon as he put the dude in the, the, the hole and he tapped out. So I give it like two and a half out of five because it wasn't they didn't get much time to rock out. But I thought both of those characters were cool though, so I look forward to seeing those more. Next up, we had a, a say more. They interviewed Jay and Silent Bob, who was in the crowd, and Kevin Smith is like this big now. He used to be big like me, and, and shout out to him for losing weight. But 
he is like is he's like skinnier than Jay uh, than than Jay is. Silent Bob done got skinnier than Jay has. And then while they're talking, some other guys come out and start talking shit to him. And I didn't really I don't know a lot of those a lot of people other than the main people. So I'm just gonna have to get to know them. But it was an okay segment, nothing crazy. Um, then we had a match between Hangman Page, who I'd never seen, I'd heard about a lot before, seen highlights, uh, versus Pac, which was Neville from WWE, who got completely misused as well. Super talented dude. They had a really good match too. Um, a lot of high flying stuff. Neville won with that top rope finisher. Uh, I don't know what he calls it in, 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 um, in AEW, but it was a dope match. I'd give it like three and a half out of five. Then we had a good match between, uh, well, a women's match between Nyla Rose, who seems to kind of be like their Nia Jax. She's like this real, like, swole, like, thick chick that's, like, super, like, intimidating. Um, I, I liked her character, though. Against Riho, who I guess is like the Asuka. She's like a, an, she's an Asian um, superstar that uh, since she'd been wrestling, she was nine years old. And she was, like, 20, she's only 22. They had a really good match. The, the, the Rio girl was little bitty. She was probably 100 pounds. And this Nyla Rose was at least 225. I mean, she was buck 20 or 225, 250. Easy. Um, they had a really good match, though. And, and Rio actually, this was for the women's title match, the first women's title match. And they Rio actually wins with a double knee and surprised the shit out of me. This was a really good match. When they first came out to the ring, I was like, well, this is going to be a squash. But Rio impressed me a lot. And so did, so did Nyla Rose. Then she starts like taking stuff out on everybody after she lost and Kenny Omega come out there. I think he trains with that the Asian chick um, because she was going, there was a the, there was an Asian dude that was gonna speak for Riho in the, the post-match interview and she come out to powerbomb him and almost dropped him and had to regain and powerbomb the dog shit out of him. So that uh, <laughs> chick wasn't joking. But I give it four out of five for the women's match, it was good. Um, then we had the main event, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, which is the elite versus Santana and Ortiz. This is my first time seeing them guys. Uh, was really impressed with them. And of course, Jericho, who's just the fucking man. Let's be real. Um, uh, they start out having an outstanding match, just like the Young Bucks and, and these guys do, man. Just high flying, like super kick city. Uh, just a lot of top, you know, a lot of just high flying stuff, but I, I really enjoy their, the energy so high in this and they're, they're what started this whole huge movement. So the crowd loves them and the energy in the, you know, during this match was great. While they were fighting though, John Moxley, Dean Ambrose, um, comes in and he has then got jacked, bro. I mean, he's just like this now. Uh, he comes in and goes after, um, Kenny Omega they start beating the shit out of each other. And if you notice in the thumbnail for this video, he takes him backstage and like suplexes him on a glass table and it shatters. Uh, it was a crazy spot there. And then the, the match continues. Um, Jericho and them end up winning by pinfall. I'd give this segment like a four and a half out of five. I thought it was a great main event. And um, then after the match, they start beating the shit out of, you know, the Young Bucks. So Cody Rhodes comes in. And he's all suited up from, you know, he done got dressed and all that. He comes suited up, sprinting down there to defend his boys, the Young Bucks. They start beating the shit out of him. And then Dustin Rhodes comes out, uh, or Dustin Runnels, whatever they call him on here. He comes out and starts defending everybody or whatever. And then my boy, Jack Swagger. You fucking heard me right. We the people, motherfucker. Jack Swagger, a.k.a. Jake Hager comes in and just starts molly whopping people. He just, I mean, he's in his fucking, his digs, his jeans, and looked like Gucci boots or whatever the fuck he was wearing, beating the dog shit out of everybody. And I guess this was his first appearance in AEW. He's like a, a Bellator fighter or something I heard Jim Ross say. But Jack Swagger, man, another guy that WWE didn't really use well enough, that's now over in AEW now, apparently, and they ended with all elite, you know, laying down on the mat and, you know, Jericho, Santino, Santana, Santana and Ortiz, Omega, and, um, I don't know, was Omega down there? I can't remember. So many people in the ring. And, um, and Jake Hager, like, standing up, like, well, you know, what y'all gonna do? So, and that's how it ended. Overall, for the first show out of a five, I'd give it a 4.75 out of five, man. I thought it was outstanding. Um, WWE's got the work cut out for them, man. They really do. 
they're going to have to they're going to have to do something. I, I know they're relying really heavy on NXT, which NXT is great. I haven't even watched NXT in over almost a year though. I've just completely I don't want to say boycotted WWE, but I'm just over it. I'm not saying I'm not going to watch it ever again, but this right here had me completely tuned in. They didn't talk. They didn't do all this talking. They had one little segment with Jane Silent Bob that was talking. The rest of it was just matches. And it flowed very well. The, the huge thing for me is having Jim Ross and Tony Schiavone. You don't have fucking Michael Cole. You don't have bitch-ass Byron, uh, whatever Byron's name is. You don't have Corey Graves. You don't have... Uh, all these annoying ass announcers that WWE will not get rid of. Corey Graves isn't that annoying, but Michael Cole is the epitome of dog shit and has been for years and will always be dog shit at commentary. Um, but overall, man, I couldn't have been happier with it. I can't wait till next Wednesday. And I can't, it's been years since I've been this excited about wrestling. I knew when this was going to be announced that it was coming to weekly programming that I was going to be on board with it because they're going to have to start – they're both going to try to outdo each other. And it's going to bring that Monday Night War back, but except to spell on Wednesday now. You got one on USA. You got one on TNT, just like the old days. And it's a great time to be a wrestling fan, man. I am all on board with AEW. Y'all comment below. Um, let me know what y'all thought of the matches. Again, I'm brand new to AEW. I've just, I just know bits and pieces of what they got going on. This was my first viewing of a full like event i haven't got to see any of the pay-per-views other than the highlights so if y'all want me to keep doing these i gladly will but y'all be sure to like comment subscribe hit that notification bell love peace and motherfucking hair grease baby chetty bobby 1130 aka wrestlemaniac a level 40